Hey everybody, Donna, thank you, this is great. It's nice to be here at this place, <laughs> the Emerald Tablet. And I had one of those tragedies, it was like the nightmare, where you write a poem, like a whole sequence. I wrote one called Emerald, one called Tablet, one called 80, and the last was called Fresno Street. <laughs> and I think I left them on the bus. <laughs> How am I going to get out of this? I think that, you know, I have them at home. Can <laughs> I go back and get them? Or should I just read from my book, Tweaky Village? That's what I'll have to do. Or invite me back. I'll come back with my poem. I have my new glasses. Oh, they're great. I went to Urban Eyes on Market Street and... All the questions were like, well, what was your prescription like? Do you have your glasses with you? And I said, well, I don't, and I never had them before. And they kept like, I was waiting for the next question, but they just were fixated on this. <laughs> so I said, wait a second. Am I the oldest person ever to come in here who has never worn glasses before? <laughs> and it was like the guy who was the owner, the ophthalmologist, and his like, assistant, and he's like, oh, no, of course not. And right at the same moment, she's like, yeah. He goes, you know, Genevieve, go back to the bathroom. And he says, she's only been here eight months. <laughs> so she hadn't really seen anybody as old. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> with these glasses. This one's called, What You Cannot See is Truth. I thought it'd be good, because I could finally see things, maybe. <laughs> the sky is a deep blue, an Umbrian blue, above the gold towers of San Francisco, watching Argento's Mother of Tears, in which a haggard, Asia, plays an art historian and an archaeologist. I don't know if you've seen any Argento films or Asia Argento, but it's, it's incomprehensible she's playing an art historian <laughs> or an archaeologist. I watch her blow dust off a bannered inscription in some unexplored catacombs and up pop words, what you see does not exist, she translates for our benefit. Mm -hmm. And what's that bit down there? What you cannot see is truth. And over the Pacific, words fail to pierce the tongue. In Bangkok, Peter Christofferson lies dead, uncrowned and broken, the sturdiest little alarm clock. His lips move, his greatest enemy, the lie. Through dark catacomb he prowls, pausing for the merest moment at the dizzying staircase. Vertigo would freeze a lesser man. It is not the man who descends. It is the world that lifts up. Sky fills with blue, more blue. Blue filched from every corner of earth. I'm sorry for you for evidently you don't have blue where you live. It is piled up above me, like the laugh of Saint Sleazy. <laughs> this is called Nude, Nude Valentine. And, you know, it was like Valentine's Day, my wife's birthday Valentine, and, you know, they, you pick a daisy, the petals of it. Did you do this when you were kids? She loves me, she loves me not, whatever. <laughs> Pick this gerbera daisy. Pull off its petals one at a time. Don't freak out when they don't come out right. She loves me, she loves me not. Mm -hmm. The word not, so harsh like a dog bite. Tempted to cheat on the daisy. You can, you could look ahead. You could see three knots, three yes. <laughs> then the flower nude, falls to the dirt. 
I loved the look of it. I loved not the look of it. I loved it when you sucked my cock. That was our slang for love. You would pull my daisy from out of my Levi's. I wanted to die then, so happy. Your finger tapping my asshole. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> This one's called Wink. I, went, I was sitting in a meeting of the Non-Site Collective and sat in the back row and listened to what they were saying. <laughs> in an art space, what is the commons? What is communing? The somatic practices of curriculum. <laughs> most, it was a talk by David Wolak. I don't know if you know the poet. He's fantastic. Reclamation of public spaces. Consensus versus desensus. The majority of the body is frontier. As Tim Dlugos wrote, the corpses change, but the party goes on forever. The body is biologically incomplete. What's missing? It's a simple question. Can a body be a commons? I hear that it's cold way down there. Laura Nero sang, <laughs> crazy cold way down there. Here's my poem, Five Year Plan. This is the shortest poem I ever wrote. So short, they put it on the back of the <laughs> To become obscure among human beings, but clearer in all relations. To become the night, thickening to mist over the water, vanishing with the first light of morning. I'll just read this last poem. It's called Speak Right. Uh, and um, well, I should, I'll just explain it as it goes along, but you know the myth of Pygmalion and Galatea? Oh, I don't know. Uh, can you hear me, nations, led like Pygmalion at the promise of Galatea, the need to make inert flesh come alive, behave like a girl, the need plunges through mind to war. Can you hear me? I was, it is believed that if one takes the right tone to this work, speaks directly into its heart, its anime catch fire, Brachioles sway and merge. Kingfishers catch fire. It was a time in my life when it was just like one person was dying after another. And I was thinking of these people as like littering corpses littered on a floor in a gallery space. Frankenstein bends, his head bigger than the moon sits up on the table. Linen sheets slip away from his loins. Body looks at me, quietly moves its mouth. Hello, Cavan. Then you have all that kazarai about, well, you created it. Now you're responsible for it. <laughs> Udo Kier does this so well in Flesh for Frankenstein. Baron coming to hate his creation. If you've seen Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, it's like the Frankenstein is unexpectedly gay when he comes when he becomes alive, and the Baron's like, and "What do I do?" <laughs> <laughs> the Baron comes to hate his creation. He tries to find it a gay mate, then shrug. I ain't no pimp. Speak low when you speak love. Speak into the monster's ear. Hello, bodies. I am here to visit you for one night only. Tell me your dreams as you lie across enchanted forest floor at Barbara Gladstone Gallery. <laughs> the stone, the glad. Were you, my friends, from former public life? Did I kiss your mouth? Were you thinking of my breath as you lost your last? 
I was in your lab. I was digging and growling like my dog, finding the warm spot. Come, dead friends. You are almost alive. The wax on the wood anoints you into Lazarus calm. You might push away that stone, announce your new life, naked, linen forgotten at your feet, your genitals bright and rosy, your eyes clear for once. It was like, you know, when we res resurrect again, we're going to come back as like our best looking selves. <laughs> your eyes clear for once. I was in love with you from far away. You seemed not to care then. I was in, in agony. Did I wish you dead then? Or did I wish merely you had never come to life in the first place to torment me with your cute haircut? and your grinning face so similar to that of screen star Joseph Gordon Leffitt. <laughs> Speak low as we fall adrift. You laugh when boys or women tell their dreams. Is it not your trick? You will recognize these as like the last words in Cleopatra as she's, she's there dying because she's had the snake suckling her depressed. In this room, in, you laugh when boys or women tell their dreams. Is not your trick? In this room, give me your madness. Bring me your youth in a jar, the snake on my breast that sucks the nurse asleep. Come, give me your kind words. Hello, living man. How once I, I jumped out of my seat while driving. My, my name came up on the screen in the gallery with Scott when your photo rolled across the screen and the walls fell away. Nude there, white walls. And I was thinking, is this what want is about? You've got the gift. Then out of poetry, some words drop out. Because right at the same time, I was having this thing where I couldn't remember the names of things. You know, or people's names, they just drop, I, you know, and then I remember. I began thinking, what if you were left with only like 10 words at the end of this, you know, process? And then out of poetry, some words drop out, scattered like corn fallen from the cob. Words drop out, and those that remain, like teeth in a skull, lisp when they mean to sing. Words fall down. It is a tree with blood instead of sap. Words drop out like the futures in my 401k plan. I look for you. I scan the room. But there's no you in it. There's a gap between the tombstones. Like Valentine's, you have left for Brussels. I've sworn I heard you whisper. I am reading these signs that the infidel hates me. Thank you.